I think the world is safer without them. Um, it wasn't my, you know, the CIA had asked me uh, as a screenwriter, you know, uh, there was a, after 9-11, you know, there was this idea that it was a fail, failure of imagination on the part of the intelligence agencies. And especially since screenwriters, such as I am sometimes, had done a better job of imagining it like in the siege, uh, which I had written about terrorism coming to New York, you know? And uh, so they wanted me to write a, essentially a scenario for the agency uh, about how to deal with bin Laden. What happens if we get him? And, um, and I wasn't going to write a screenplay for the CIA, <laughs> but I decided I would send them a message by writing an op-ed for the New York Times about what do we do if we get bin Laden. And my prescription for it was, if you catch him, don't kill him. You'll make him a martyr right away. Uh, and, you know, killing bin Laden doesn't mean that you kill bin Ladenism. That's what you need to dispose of. So... And don't put him on trial in America right away. You know, take him first of all to uh, East Africa, where you know in 1998 in Kenya and Tanzania, uh, bin Laden, bin Laden and Al Qaeda destroyed two American embassies, killing 224 people. More than 100 people were blinded by the flying glass. So, put him in a courtroom in Nairobi, and you know have him address the the blind Africans. Uh, who are, have been wounded by him and his group and or take him to uh, Dar es Salaam, you know, where on, you know, the bombing was on a Friday and uh, bin Laden said that good Muslims would be in the mosque. And so it'd be an interesting place in the courtroom to have him answer the question, what is a good Muslim? And then you could take him uh, to London, to Paris, to Madrid. Uh, you could take him to India. You could, I mean, there's so many places you could take him. A, a worldwide tour of the harm done by Al Qaeda. And then finally, you could bring him to America and have him answer for the 3,000 Americans who died on 9 11 and the 17 American sailors killed on the USS Cole. But that's not the last stop on the tour. Take him back to his homeland. Uh, most of the people that Al Qaeda killed were Muslims, and many of them were Saudis. So have him tried in a Sharia court, which is the only law that he would respect. And if he's convicted, he'd be taken to a, a square and called Chop Chop Square in downtown Riyadh. And a big man with a, a long sword would cut off his head, and then he'd be taken and buried in an unmarked Wahhabi graveyard. And I think that would do a good job of eliminating bin Ladenism. The CIA was afraid of uh, Al Qaeda taking hostages and uh, then, you know, and using them to try to free bin Laden. Uh, it's un understandable, you know, I can, uh, but uh, still, I thought it was a risk worth taking. And, um, you know, they didn't take my advice evidently so and and Zawahri you know uh it was odd I Zawahri was you know the guy that kept Al-Qaeda alive after bin Laden and um he lasted for quite a long time um the fact that he was killed in Kabul uh certainly indicates that the Taliban hasn't changed its ways um and I, you know, there's a hunt for a new leader of Al Qaeda, but Al Qaeda's grown since Bin Laden's death, so it's not asleep. Its, it's trajectory hasn't changed, and so I think it's something we have so many other concerns on our plate right now. But terrorism and Al Qaeda haven't gone away.